She is in the supine position. She would like to reposition the left lateral, lateral side for comfort. Ms. Smith has a feed and tube. What we do for her feed at 0800? She needs to be placed in the semi fallow position prior to the feed to decrease her risk for aspiration. Ms. Peterson is a COPD patient that's been experiencing dyspnea intermittently and is on 8 liters SM. She is currently in semi fallow. Move to fallow, and if that does not alleviate her dyspnea, continue to her orthopnic position and call respiratory therapy. Ms. Adams has just returned from a lumbar surgery. She's had the L3, L4 dys. Fusion, please log roll her to her right side to decrease the risk of skin breakdown. Ms. Brown is complaining of being constipated and needs an enema. You're going to want that. Place her in this position. Any questions? I'm going. The first body position you saw our patient in is called supine position. This is achieved by laying the patient on their back with the head of the bed kept low. Note that pillows or a small rolled towel can be placed in different areas such as under the head, shoulders, arms, or ankles for comfort and alignment. Remember to raise the bed to the proper working height before moving your patient. This will protect your lower back from injury as you reposition your patients. The patient was then moved into semi fowler's position. This is where the patient is lying on their back with the head of the bed elevated to a height between 45 and 60 degrees. semi fallers is one of the easier positions to move patients into. However, you must check several things to maintain the patient's proper body alignment before you're done. First, ensure the patient's head is near the top of the bed. If they are sitting too low, not only will this cause discomfort, but could also put them at risk for injury. Second, place pillows behind the head and shoulders, under the thighs, and under the heels as needed for comfort and safety. This position is most often used for aspiration prevention during feeding or for improving patient breathing patterns. And always remember to use two identifiers before performing any procedure on your patient. two position changes during this scene. The first was semi fallers to fallers. Fallers is very similar to semi fallers. The biggest difference is the elevation of the head of the bed. For fallers position, the head of the bed should be raised between 60 and 90 degrees. If the bed does not raise up to 90 degrees, you can tuck pillows behind their back to lift them up further. As you saw with our respiratory patient, sometimes Fowler's position is not enough to relieve the pressure in the chest so they can breathe easier. For more acute circumstances such as this, we use the orthopnic position. You must move the bedside table directly in front of the patient, place one or two pillows on top, and instruct the patient to lean forward and rest their arms and head there. It is very important that you understand that this is a medical emergency. You will call for assistance and stay with the patient until the respiratory team arrives.
first moved this patient into what is called the lateral or side-lying position. It is just how the name sounds, with the patient lying on their side instead of their back. It is used mainly for the patient's comfort and safety. This position can be further specified by identifying which side the patient is moved to. In our case, we moved her onto her left side, so the complete name would be the left lateral position. You can place pillows under the head, behind the back, and between the knees to maximize comfort, ensure proper alignment, and especially to prevent pressure ulcers. What you just saw was called a log roll. Log rolling is a special technique used when a patient's spine must be kept in complete alignment. It is never done alone. You will always have two to three people assisting with this procedure. If only two nurses are available, place one nurse on each side of the bed. If three nurses are available, place one nurse on each side of the bed and have the third person focus specifically on the alignment of the head and neck. Have the patient fold their arms across their chest Place a regular or an abduction pillow between the patient's legs. Then grasp the far side of the patient's body with alternating hands while supporting from the shoulders down to the thighs. Throughout the entire procedure, ensure there is no spinal twisting. Finally, pillows may be placed for support and comfort. You will put pillows behind the patient's back, under the head, and between the knees. The final position is known as SIMS. It is used when patients require an enema, suppository, or rectal exam. Begin with the bed flat. You will then turn the patient so that they are lying on their left side. Have the patient roll forward to allow their upper body to lie on the bed. Flex the right hip and bring the right knee up to the chest at a 90 degree angle, allowing that leg to rest on the bed. Bring their left arm behind their back and rest it alongside the patient's body. 
The right arm should be by the patient's head on the bed in a comfortable position. Both the left arm and left leg should be straight. A pillow may be placed under the head, right arm, or right leg for comfort. Once you are done with the procedure, do not leave the patient in SIMS. Always move them to a more comfortable position. Now let's review. Take a minute to look over the following questions. Pause the video to answer, then continue on to see if you got it right. When repositioning a patient in lateral position, which of the following should you not do? A. Keep your base of support wide and back straight. B. Reposition the patient yourself. C. Ask the patient to cross their arms over their chest or D, use a draw sheet to assist in positioning your patient? The answer is B, reposition the patient by yourself. You are working with a patient who has been diagnosed with congestive heart failure. He complains of shortness of breath and his breathing appears labored. You place him in Fowler's position, but he continues to have difficulty breathing. Which position would best aid this patient? A supine, B, semifallers, C, sims, or D, orthopnic? The answer is D, orthopnic. For examination of the rectal area and treatment with enemas, the blank position is most favorable. Is it A, sims, B, prone, C, genupectoral, or D, dorsal recumbent? The answer is A, SIMS. When would the semifowler's position be most appropriate? A, when the patient has a spinal cord injury. B, when the pulse oximetry shows the patient's oxygen saturation below 95%. C, when the patient is receiving nasogastric feedings. Or D, when the patient is given a suppository. The correct answer is C, when the patient is receiving nasogastric feedings. How many degrees do you raise the head of the bed for Fowler's position? Is it A, 25 to 30, B, 30 to 45, C, 45 to 60, or D, 60 to 90? If you answered D, 60 to 90, you would be correct. When log rolling a patient, where should you place your hands? A, by the head, shoulders, and lower back. B, beneath the legs and under the arms. C, supporting the head and shoulders. Or D, evenly spaced along the spine between the shoulders and thighs. The correct answer is D, evenly spaced along the spine between the shoulders and thighs. How did you do? If you had trouble with any of these important positions, go back and review that section of the video or ask your instructor to clarify. My Fowler move, to, move her to Fowler's if that does not alleviate her dyspnea continued or effective position. I'm going to call respiratory. Sorry. Call respiratory. Um, we're going to have to redo this. <laughs> <laughs>